right, good evening, everybody. I'm Pastor Michael Pilmore, and uh, I'll be your training host during this segment of Back to the Basics and Serving God. And in this lesson, we're going to continue our study of how to keep your purpose by never forgetting the Great Commandment, Part 2. Now, in the first segment, we found out what that Great Commandment was. Mark um, explained to us that the Great Commandment is love. And so, as we begin this next segment in this lesson, Let's open today by looking at some very familiar passages of Scripture. And we're going to begin with John chapter 13. We're going to read verses 34 and 35. So now, I'm giving you a new commandment. Now this is Jesus. And he said, love each other just as I have loved you. You should love each other as I have have loved you. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. So how do we prove to the world that we submit to the authority and the teachings of Jesus? By walking in love. Just simple as that. I tell you, when we walk in love, when people are mean to us, People will notice. That's what Jesus did. Then, if you have your Bibles, then let's look at John chapter 15. John chapter 15, and we'll look at verse uh, 12 through 17. So again, how do we allow the world to see the Father? How do we allow the world to see Jesus? Because Jesus is love. The Father is love by walking in love. And so, Notice uh, verse uh, 12 of John chapter 15. This is my commandment. Love each other the same way I have loved you. Notice that. He's not asking us, please, if you could, walk in love. He says, this is a command. Now, we are in the army of, of, of Jesus Christ. So, in other words, this could be a militarily, militaristic <laughs> A military term, <laughs> a command. We've been given an order from the master, from the king, from the chief, from the general of all the armies. And that command is that we love each other the same way that he loved us. Now, a command is an order and it's meant to be followed. It's not asking you if you want to. It's not asking you if you will. It's not asking you if you feel like it. Do it. You love one another, and as you love one another, it'll prove to the world that we are Jesus, that we belong to the Christ. <laughs> Notice verse 13, then it says, there is, there is no greater love than to lay down your life for one of your friends. Verse 14 goes on to say, and you are my friends if you do what I command. Now notice verse 15. I no longer call you slaves because a master doesn't confide in his slaves. Now you're my friends. Since I have told you everything the Father has told, told me. Jesus confided in the disciples and by the writing of John is confiding in us what the Father told him. We are to love. We are to walk in love. Verse 16 goes on to say that you didn't choose me, I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit so that my Father will give you whatever you ask for using my name. Notice verse 17 again. This is my command, love each other. Now I like it in another translation, love one another. So love each other. Jesus is commanding us to love each other. Then, if you will, turn with me to James chapter 2 and verse 8. Now, I'm reading all these uh, scriptures from the, the New Living Translation. I like the New Living Translation. It speaks to me, and I can understand it. I spent many years studying the King James, and I still sometimes don't understand it. 
So the New Living Translation, and let me, t- let me just you know, make this suggestion. Whatever translation works for you that you can get comprehension in the Word of God, use it. So James chapter 2 and verse 8, and that was free, says, Yes, indeed, it's good when you obey the royal law as found in the Scriptures. The royal law. We are, you know, Jesus is royalty. And because he's royalty, we're royalty. We're kings and priests. A king is royalty. He said, here's the royal decree. Here's the royal law. Love your neighbor as yourself. Man, if, if we all did that, there'd be no hate in the world because I love, well, as I say, I love me most of the time. Sometimes I really don't like me at all, just like you do, but I do love me. There's nobody, there's no, nobody better at being me than me. You say, well, you know, I, I'm not sure I can love myself. Well, God loves you so much that he sent his son Jesus. Even when we were unlovable, he loved us. Love begins with forgiveness. And sometimes we just have to forgive ourselves for being ourselves. Amen. So now look at uh, Romans chapter 13, verses 8. Romans 13, verse 8. And then I'm going to read down through verse 10 tonight. Owe nothing to anyone except for your obligation to love one another. Now, if you love your neighbor, you will fulfill the requirements of God's law. For the commandment says, you must not commit adultery. You must not murder. You must not steal. You must not covet. These and other such commandments are summed up in this one commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to others. So love fulfills the requirements of God's law. If you'll walk in love, it'll be hard for you to break any of the Ten Commandments. Because love will always put the other person first. Notice how important uh, this command is to love one another. When we love God, we should be able to love people. The Bible tells us that the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts. That that shed abroad means it's been poured out. When we became born-again believers, when we became part of the body of Christ, when we accepted Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior, we were translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of His dear Son. The kingdom of God is a kingdom of love. And so when we allow God's love to work in and through us, now love is a fruit. People think it it takes no work to love people. I got news for you. There's some people it takes a lot of work. And, uh, you know, but love is is a fruit of the Spirit. If you cultivate it, it will grow. It will develop. When people say, well, I've fallen out of love, I I hate that person, you have to cultivate that love. And sometimes we cultivate that love by forgiving people that are unforgivable, loving people who are mean, doing things, you know, what's the new saying? Um, Pay forward the act of kindness. Sometimes just being kind when people are unkind. That's showing love. Not condemning people but loving people how do we love people well kind words telling people that they do good things do done a good job uh you know not backbiting when they're not around not talking or gossiping when they're not around you know we see here uh, if if we will fulfill the law of love will not commit adultery Adultery is having sexual relations outside of marriage, so it's going to go against the person that you really do love, which is your spouse. You'll not commit murder. It doesn't say anything about in your heart. It just says the act of murder. You must not, you will not steal, and you'll not covet. I think the word covet is pretty interesting because the word covet to define it means to decide to desire wrongfully exceedingly tremendously 
extremely or without due regard for the rights of others. That's what it means to covet. Now, when, the, when God's love is in operation, you will not covet. You will not uh, wrongfully, exceedingly, tremendously, or extremely desire something without the regard for the rights of others. Notice John, 1 John chapter 3. We'll pick up in verse 14. 1 John chapter 3, verse 14. If we love our brothers and sisters who are believers, it proves that we have passed from death to life. But a person who has no love is still dead. Anyone who hates another brother or sister is really a murderer at heart. And you know that murderers don't have eternal life within them. We know what real love is. Because Jesus gave up his life for us, so also ought we to give up our lives for our brothers and sisters. Notice verse 17 here. And if someone has enough money to live well and sees a brother or sister in need but shows no compassion, how can God's love be in that person? Dear children, let's not merely say that we love each other. Let us show the truth by our actions love is actionable our actions verse 19 will show that we belong to the truth so we will be confident when we stand before god even if we feel guilty god is greater than our feelings and he knows everything dear friends if we don't feel guilty we can come to god with boldness and confidence and we will receive from him whatever we ask because we obey him and do the things that please him. And this is his commandment. We must believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ. And now notice that and is a conjunction and, it, and, and it's tying what was said to what is going to be said. So notice this, that this is the commandment. This is the command. Number one, we must believe in the name of Jesus, his son. Jesus Christ. Number two, love one another just as he commanded us. Two-part command. Verse 24 tells us those who obey God's commandments remain in fellowship with him, and he is with them, and we know he lives in us because the spirit he gave us lives in us. Isn't that good news tonight? The spirit that he gave us lives in us. We're right here in 1 John. Let's go over to chapter 4, and we're going to read verses 7 and 8. Dear friends, let us continue to love one another. For love comes from God. So we're not talking about a human love here. We're talking about a spiritual aspect of our being. Again, love is a fruit of the Spirit, and it grows. So, anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. But anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. For out of our innermost being flows the very nature of God. And that's what the world sees. We want people to come to Jesus. We want people to get to know the God. They're going to come to know them through our actions. And love is an actionable fruit of the Spirit that will bring people to Jesus Christ. The Bible says in John chapter 3 and verse 16 that God so loved the world that he gave. What did he give? He gave his only begotten son that whosoever would call upon the name of the Lord would be saved. We're right here in 1 John uh, chapter 4. Let's drop down to verse 10. This is real love. Not, what we loved, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. No one has ever seen God, but we love each other. But if we love each other, God lives in us and his love is brought to full expression in us. Nobody's ever seen God but we can see his nature and character in us or in other people. That's how we know that God is 
alive because God is love. And if people are going to see God through you, they're going to have to see love actionable, not words. It's, it's really easy to tell people, I love you, I love you, not for me, but I love you, I love you. But love is an action. Love is caring. Love is understanding. It's not rude. It's not unmannerly. It's not, not self-seeking. And the Apostle John had a lot to say about our love walk. But if we're going to live by the great commandment, we're going to find that it's a great joy. It's going to have many great moments. But also, I will guarantee you, there will be challenging times. Challenging times sometimes come into as challenging people. When we choose to believe the best about others and when we choose to say good things about others we will experience his joy and we'll be blessed it's all about choices we can choose to speak rightly about people or we can choose to speak negatively about people i don't know about you but my flesh it wants to talk about people it needs to talk about people right but God's love in me constrains me from being that person. And I speak, I have learned and taught myself to speak good about people. Don't see the cup half full in somebody's life. See it, or half empty in somebody's life. You don't see the cup half full. Don't see the cup half empty in somebody's life. See it half full. They're going through struggles in life as well, and their life's not perfect, neither is your life, man. And maybe a kind word is what they need. There's an old saying I've heard around in, in, in church circles, one word from heaven will change your life. How about one word from God? You don't know when you will spark life through what you say or what you do or your action in a moment of time, how it can eternally change somebody's life. So in our church relationships, this is also important because many times the enemy uses those closest to us to hurt us the most. Whether it's accidental or intentional, man, we must choose love. Love is a choice. Love is bringing your flesh into subjection when you want to reach out with a baseball bat and wake somebody up. Love is a choice. And in our relationships with other churches, in our community, we must realize that we're not competing with other churches. But we are to complement them and work together to minister to our communities. We're not in competition. Jesus didn't go around competing with all the other Sadducees and Pharisees of his time. He had a message. And God gives every church a message. Not every church believes the same. But man, as long as they believe Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, I got something I can agree with. Let's quit debating all the little things and start agreeing on the major issue, winning people to Jesus Christ one by one. So it's important to guard your heart and your words as it relates to other churches and other people. And while we may disagree on some minor doctrinal points, it's important to understand that we are still the body of Christ. I hear it all the time. You know, people get together in one circle and they start talking about another circle. And they get into this circle and they start, let's just find what we can agree on, and that's Jesus. Let's not talk about our pastors. Let's not talk about the ministries. Let's not talk about the ministers. Let's not talk about the people, the laity, the leadership, the churches. Let's focus on Jesus because we can disagree without being disagreeable. And when we do, we walk in love. Amen? Now in our next session, we'll begin to look at at um, 
as we as as we uh, keep and pursue our purpose, we're going to begin looking at. We are never to forget. We are to live by faith. We're to live by great faith. Amen. Well, this concludes this segment of Back to the Basic and Serving God. I'm Michael Pilmore. Thanks for watching. <laughs>